Good evening. The October 15, 2019 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order and we are pleased to have with us here today our Fire Chief Scott Spencer to lead us in our invocation and after the invocation please remain standing for our pledge to the flag. Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, first of all, Lord, we just praise you for who you are. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. Lord, we ask a special blessing on our commissioners tonight as they make decisions that will impact this county. Lord, we just ask that uh, you give them wisdom, guidance, and discernment in the decisions they do make. Lord, we thank you for the citizens of this county uh, and for what they mean to this county. Lord, we ask that you protect them. Lord, we uh, ask a blessing on our first responders, just protect them, uh, send them back home to their families uh, safe. Uh, and all these things we ask in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Fire Chief Spencer, thank you for being here with us this evening, leading us in our invocation, and good evening to the citizens of Douglas County. We value your voice, and we appreciate your participation in county government. Public comment, clerk, I believe you indicated we had no one sign up tonight for public comment, is that correct? Okay, uh, Board of Commissioners, we have no public comment tonight, so we'll move right into the approval of our minutes. Board of Commissioners, you have the commission meeting minutes of October 1st, 2019, the work session minutes of September 30th, 2019, and the executive session minutes of September 30th, 2019. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand as presented, stand approved as presented. Proclamations. Tonight we have a total of four proclamations, and uh, tab number four is proclaiming the month of October as Cyber Security Awareness Month in Douglas County and that will be rendered by our own Russ Martin, and I believe he's going to bring our cybersecurity manager up, uh, Dat, uh, with us, to, with him tonight. And I just want to remind everyone as we present these proclamations, if you, we'll hold off until the very end, we'll come down and take uh, individual photographs with each group that presented tonight. So with that being said, uh, our own Russ Martin, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, there's a saying that I can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well. I've been in a difficult position for the last several years of trying to explain to the Board of Commissioners uh, cyber attacks and, and how much uh, those are increasing, how big a threat that is to municipalities. Uh, and I've been very lucky to have a very patient board and a great technology committee to help me advocate for these changes. Uh, one of the biggest things that we've all agreed on recently was the need for um, a highly skilled, dedicated individual to help lead those efforts uh, to keep us safe. And so I'd like to introduce Dat Lu to you. Uh, Dat is a graduate of Florida International University where he received his Bachelor's of Science in Information Systems. He also went on to earn his master's degree from Nova Southeastern University. Uh, University. He also holds a variety of networking and cybersecurity certifications and has multiple years of experience working in the public sector. Uh, I do, again, appreciate the Board of Commissioners for all your support as we continue to move forward to try to keep our citizens and employees safe. And that will now read our proclamation. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so first, I just want to thank you guys for having me and just awarding me the opportunity to be here and working for Lee County. Um, and I'm excited to do whatever I can to improve the cybersecurity posture of the county. So. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Whereas Douglas County recognizes the use of internet and internet connected devices now routine for government agencies, citizens, and businesses to communicate, conduct business, managing finances, improve and enhance education opportunities, and provide entertainment, and whereas essential businesses and services are increasingly dependent on technology to support finances, telecommunications, transportation utilities, healthcare, and emergency response systems, and 
whereas technology and users are increasingly asked for and comfortable sharing personal information online, businesses and governments store essential private information and technology systems, and these technology infrastructure face increasing threats from spyware, ransomware, and other malicious cyber activities. Focus on robbing us of our financial resources, personal information, and privacy through ransoms, identity theft, and fraud, and whereas the security of data and technology systems, both a shared and personal responsibility in which each of us have a critical role and awareness of computer security essentials will improve the security of stored information and help protect Douglas County, its citizens, and its businesses. And whereas the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the National Cybersecurity Alliance, and the state of Georgia recognize October as National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and during this month, all, individu all individuals as well as public and private organizations are encouraged to take time to educate themselves about cyber threats and how to combat them and put that knowledge into practice in their homes, schools, and workplaces. Now, therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim the month of October 2019 as Cybersecurity Awareness Month in Douglas County. So proclaim this 15th day of October 2019. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dad Lou. That was uh, amazing. And cybersecurity is definitely important um, all over the, the nation. Yes. And we are just honored that you have joined us to uh, grace us with your knowledge and capability of making sure that we're even safer. We know that every moment is critical. Uh, and we appreciate everything that you do. Uh, and thank you so much, uh, Russ Martin. Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation regarding uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month here in Douglas County. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries and so congratulations <coughs> on this proclamation regarding cybersecurity here in Douglas County. Thank right. you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move on to tab number five, proclaiming the month of October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in Douglas County and the proclamation will be read by our own Alain Abbas uh, in our, here in, in our solicitor's office. Thank mm -hmm. you so much yes, for being here. Thank you. I just want to say as we think about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, just remember that one in eight women are diagnosed with breast cancer and when it does affect somebody, it doesn't affect just them but their whole family and friends. And so um, there are people here today who have all been affected by it. So um, whereas every year too many Americans are touched by the pain and hardship caused by breast cancer, whereas breast cancer is the second most common form of cancer found in women in the United States, and it is leading cause of cancer death for women with one in eight women diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. And whereas more than 2,500 men will likely be diagnosed with some form of breast cancer in 2019, but thanks to early detection and improved treatment options, deaths from breast cancer have decreased significantly, significantly in, the late, in the last decade. Whereas many people have endured the heartbreak in, of losing someone to breast cancer, and it's the memories of those loved ones that drive us to find a cure. And whereas all women are encouraged to talk to their health care providers about mammograms and other methods of early detection, as well as the risks of developing breast cancer and what can be done to reduce that risk. Whereas during the month of October, we remember those lost to the terrible disease that stands and stands strong for those currently facing breast cancer diagnosis and we strengthen our resolve to do our part in supporting those affected. And whereas by raising awareness of breast cancer and supporting research, prevention, and early detection, we will move closer to eradicating this disease. Now, therefore, let it be proclaimed that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners that October is designated as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we urge all Douglas County residents to spread awareness of the disease, provide support for those affected by this illness, and educate others on its prevention and early detection. So proclaim this 15th day of October 2019. Thank you so much, Leanne. Awareness and education is very important, specifically, uh, particularly as because one in eight women are diagnosed in this country. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. And uh, is the second most common form. Uh, of cancer for women. Uh, and then men are not exempt from this either. So again, thank you for just uh, standing here reading the proclamation and advocating the importance of uh, 
education and awareness about breast cancer. With that being said, Board of, uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, you have heard the proclamation regarding Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Please, um, do we have a motion? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. And Lynn, your special guest tonight is at your daughter and son. This, my niece and my nephews. Your niece and nephews. Well, yeah. thank you all for standing with your aunt tonight. Yeah. We'll take a photograph uh, when okay. I finish the last. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you so much and congratulations thank on the you. proclamation. <laughs> Tab number six. Proclaiming the month of October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Douglas County, we have uh, Ms. Teresa Smith here to uh, engage us in this uh, proclamation today. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Good Smith. evening. Good evening. And I would like to uh, thank the uh, Board of Commissioners for recognizing October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I would like to also extend an invitation to attend our annual candlelight vigil, which is being held on Thursday, October the 17th at 7 o'clock p.m. at Heritage Baptist Church that is located at 8800 Rose <coughs> Avenue in Douglasville. Whereas the theme for 2019 Domestic Violence Awareness Month is unmasked domestic violence by reclaiming broken lives. And whereas Share House goal is to bring peace and structure into the lives of victims of domestic violence and to bring awareness and minimize the danger of victimization. And whereas the crimes of domestic and sexual violence violate an individual's privacy, dignity, security, and humanity due to the systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control and or abuse. And whereas domestic violence is an abusive behavior in intimate relationships used by one partner to exert power and gain control over the other. One in four women and one in nine men experience severe intimate partner physical violence and or intimate partner stalking with <coughs> impacts such as injury, fearfulness, post-traumatic stress disorder, and whereas <coughs> prevention, intervention, and treatment for victims can only be done through public awareness and education about domestic violence. Now, therefore, in recognition of the important work done by ShareHouse, who provides a variety of services designed to meet the comprehensive needs of children, women, and men attempting to rebuild their lives after abuse and violence, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim the month of October to be National Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Douglas County. And with this calls upon all citizens to take this opportunity to educate themselves about the impact of domestic violence in Douglas County. Therefore, in recognition of Domestic Violence Month, let us remember the victims of domestic violence, celebrate the survivors, and work together to eliminate violence against women children and men of all ages in our community. So proclaimed this 15th day of October, 2019. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. That was uh, very well said. And uh, I would like to thank Sharehouse for leading the charge and the comprehensive needs uh, required for abuse and violence to protect our victims uh, that experience that domestic situation. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Congratulations, and thank, thank you again you. for leading the charge on the domestic thank violence you. here in Douglas County. 
We have a tab number seven. We have proclaiming the month of October as Hispanic Heritage Month in Douglas County. And we have Pastor Daryl uh, Johns here from Atlanta, Pentecostal, and Mr. Marvin Reyes here. And then also I see Mr. and Mrs. Castro in the audience tonight. If you would just come stand with them, if you could, just stand. Um, we appreciate you coming. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Castro are the parents of uh, Gabriella Castro, who was my intern, and they're American Hispanics, and appreciate you so much being here tonight. Sent you an invitation, and you responded, so thank you. Pastor? Thank you. Whereas each year, Americans observe National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America, and whereas the observation started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson and was expanded by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 to cover a 30-day period, and whereas the day of September 15th is significant because it is the anniversary of independence for Latin American countries of Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. Mexico and Chile separate their independence days on September 16th and September 18th, and Columbus Day, or Dia de la Raza, which is October 12th, falls within this 30-day period. And whereas America's diversity has always been a great strength of our nation, as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, we recognize and applaud the extraordinary accomplishments of Hispanic Americans. And whereas, from America's beginning, Hispanic Americans have served as leaders in business, government, law, science, athletics, the arts, and many other fields. In 1822, Joseph Marion Hernandez became the first Hispanic to serve as a member of the United States Congress representing the newly established territory of Florida. And whereas National Hispanic Heritage Month provides an opportunity to recognize the vitality of the Hispanic culture as an integral part of our society and to acknowledge the service of Hispanic Americans to our country from those who have aided our local communities to those who have served in the armed forces, distinguishing themselves in leadership and courage. Now, therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims September 15th through October 15th, 2019 as National Hispanic Heritage Month in Douglas County and join with all citizens in recognizing the many contributions of Hispanic Americans to the United States and Douglas County. So proclaimed this 15th day of October, 2019. Thank you so much, Pastor. We appreciate uh, you, Pastor John, for taking the time yes, to come read this proclamation for us today. And also, I believe Pastor Castro, <coughs> I mean, not Pastor Castro, Reyes. Reyes, and then Mr. and Mrs. Castro, thank you for standing. American diversity is great strength. And our nation, uh, we deeply appreciate the, the wide range and variety of all the contributions that the Hispanic Americans have uh, placed upon our hearts and also things that are just visible here in Douglas County and all over this United States. So thank you uh, for your, for reading this proclamation. It is so appropriate. Wanted to make sure we fall within that window of September 15th to October 15th. And so glad that you were able to respond today. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. <coughs> We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Congratulations. And what we'll do, we'll come down and take photographs in the order as these proclamations were read and delivered. We'll start off with uh, the cybersecurity and then next breast cancer and then uh, our domestic violence and then we'll move on last but certainly not least our Hispanic Heritage Month photographs.
Okay. All right. Next, we'll move into our business items. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we have an item that's been, that has, this item was tabled on 10 one which is October 1st, 2019. So do we have a motion to untable tab number eight, authorization to approve a four-year Sun Trust master lease agreement? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second to untable. Uh, please indicate uh, by raising your right hand. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries to untable this item. Now the item has been untabled. Board of Commissioners, do we have an authorization to approve a four-year SunTrust master <coughs> lease agreement for patrol cars, equipment refresh, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review? Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner. Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, I'll be very quick. I want to, I need confirmation from the county attorney and or um, county uh, administrator that we are doing sheriff car or patrol car equipment, not patrol cars. It's just how it was stated. In other words, no cars will be involved with this lease. Is that accurate? Yes, that's correct. It's equipment. Just equipment alone? Yes, sir. All right. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I think. Oh, just Ken, I think you want to yeah. comment yeah. on this. Okay. Th thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair and Board members, uh, we're releasing this for approval subject to final legal review. There's still some legal language, not substantive language, but legal language to clear some hurdles under Georgia law that will be ironed out hopefully this week with SunTrust. But we understand it to be a, a, the computers in the uh, patrol cars equipment. So I just want to make sure. Mark, is that what you understand it to be? Yes, sir, that's correct. But, but this ver the version in front of you will be modified slightly with some legal language to make it pa pass the financial test mm -hmm. of what kind of the transaction it is, but the substance will remain the same. Okay. I yield back. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. And thank you so much, uh, legal counsel. We have a motion and a second on the table. Please prepare to cast your votes. Okay, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. We'll move on to tab number nine. Tab number nine is authorization to approve the 2020 Douglas County Employee Benefit Offerings as recommended by the Benefits Committee and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to, to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. So, could I have Fred and Jennifer Holloman to come up, please? Good evening, Board of Commissioners. Good evening. Madam Chair. Yes. Can y'all hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Good evening. Thank you for coming down. So, oh. I'm glad you're here as well. We have John Leggett with us from uh, MSI. He's yes, here. yes. So can you give us a little bit of background as to why we're here and what we're doing? Well, actually, this is our annual uh, renewal mm -hmm. for our employee benefits program. We uh, kind of go through this process every year. Um, uh, our renewal is kind of late this year, and we apologize for that. Our claims experience was, was running not so, uh, so well the first six, seven months of the year. So we decided to give it an extra two to, um, 
before we confirmed our renewal amount. So that's why we're coming to the, uh, the board a little later this year, but um, these are the things that, uh, and I would like for John to, uh, to step up and, uh, and come and kind of walk us through <coughs> the, uh, the information that they presented to us during the meeting. That would be wonderful, okay. well, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. It's John Leggett, MSI Benefits Group. Um, I believe that you all have seen the medical plan decrements page. Yes. And so this is uh, what was on the table and was presented to the Benefits Committee and, and what was being recommended. Um, we were looking at, the county is looking at a, a, fair, a larger than anticipated increase in claims. And so one way to offset the claims is to either increase uh, employee deductions or to make plan changes. And so what we looked at was what we, could we do to the plans to try to uh, combat some of the increase of the claims. And a couple of the, the, the changes we were recommending were actually improvements like the Live Health Online, um, making that uh, no cost to the employees instead of the $10 copay, um, changing the deductible for a freestanding outpatient surgery, uh, changing that from deductible coinsurance to just uh, coinsurance with no deductible as someone going to an out uh, freestanding would be less than going to a hospital. So those were actual improvements. And then we got into some other things when we looked at the plan, what can we do, the, the, you know, to try to drive the, the claims down a little bit. And so we presented three options to the committee. Um, currently the out of pocket for an individual working uh, or individual covered in the Douglas County plan is $1,750 annually um, before the plan pays 100%. It is capped at three times. So it's, that's, it's that $1,750 per individual and capped at $5,250 for a family. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's lower when we look at the benchmark and, and comparing it to the state, which we like to always see what the state is doing. So we presented three options. Um, we called it option B, C, and D. B was uh, $2,500, taking that to $2,500 out of pocket max. Um, C was increasing it to $3,000 and D was $4,000. And obviously the, the higher that w went up, the, the more that we expected the claims to level off. So the committee ended up recommending the $4,000, $8,000 uh, cap, which was a 3% decrement, or we expected the claims to go down. By, by doing that, it reduced the claims by almost 500,000. And so all the other changes were part of this, were minimal, um, the deductible going up from 750 to 1,000, increasing some co-pays for the doctors, primary and specialists from 25 and 50 to 30 and 60. Uh, the ER usage has been up here, and so one of the things we, we looked at to try to combat that is to increase the ER copay from 200 to 300. Um, and then we get down to the drug card. The, uh, the drug, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield has a, a fairly new drug plan that's been out for a couple of years. And one, it's, it's where they have le level pharmacies, level one, level two pharmacies. And so we were looking at putting this in place for the uh, for each plan, and basically it's it's the copays right now for our tier one drug is 15, uh, that'd be like a generic tier two is 30, and tier three 60. And so, in anyone if we move to this level one level two pharmacy, anybody who used a level one pharmacy would see no change in their copays. However, if you go to a level two pharmacy, and that would be a Publix, uh, Walgreens. There's some other local small pharmacies here in town that would fall under level two. The copay would be 25, 40, and 70. So $10 more on each one, um, depending on the pharmacy that, that the member uses. And by making all those changes, um, we took the, the, the overall claim number was, would be reduced if you went with option B, just over 1.7 million. Option C was right under 1.8 million, and option D, which I think was the, the recommended option, was uh, right under 2 million. And so looking at the increase in claims for the 2020, um, the best way to try to combat that increase was to make these changes, and that was what, you know, the, instead of increased employee deductions, we looked at doing the plan, plan changes there. And so that, those were uh, the recommended changes. Thank you so much, John. Mm -hmm. I think that sums it up. Um, I know this year we had uh, an increase of 66 babies born. <laughs> yeah. And maybe still counting because we're just, what, October? We, have, <laughs> we haven't ended the year yet. So yeah. 66 babies in Douglas County is an anomaly, <laughs> uh, really to is. say the least. That went up <laughs> by 200%. But the majority, it looks like, of our increase 
came from spine and joints, chronic illnesses, and unfortunately, cancer. Right. Now, those were the driving factors. You had um, the spine and joints. It was 50% over the benchmark with about 1.1 1. 1, 1 1.5 million, nearly 1.5 million maternity. We had about 1.3 million in claims, about 200% over the benchmark. The chronic kidney, that accounted for just under 1.2 million, 175% over benchmark. Cancer was just over a million. And all those four categories were, were really what were driving uh, a lot of the claims. And, and, you know, the high cost members, the high cost claimants, you know, was just increased this year. And, and we just had a, a, one of those years. Mm -hmm. And so when we, when, when we look at what we expect for 2020, they give us a number. And it could be right on. It could be w that we run better. And, uh, we, you know, when you look at how the claims run, it's just year to year it can vary, really. Mm -hmm. so. So as the county or as the Board of Commissioners, we have to make those hard decisions when it comes to budgeting as to how we will, one, take care of our employees because they are the heartbeat of how this county, you know, keeps moving and keeps running. Sure. We can't do any of this without them. But two, we also have to make sure that we budget the county taxpayers' money wisely as well. So um, I'm confident with what our committee, I'm the chairman of the Benefits Committee, so I'm confident in what everybody decided to take a vote, vote on and uh, and recommend it. So um, with that, I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Okay. Any other? Oh, Commissioner Guider, yes, I saw her hand first. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Guider. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I didn't sleep very well very, last night thinking about all this. Uh, Four thousand, I mean, uh, increasing the uh, pocket, out of pocket uh -huh. for the employees to 4,000 from the 1750, uh, uh, that's just too much, too much of a jump. Uh, I know that uh, we're saying the industry says this is about normal, but there's a lot of things that, like the hospitals, they don't go by the industry level as far as their charges are concerned. I could probably go down the street and get a CAT scan for five seven to seven hundred dollars but if i go to the hospital i'm going to pay four or five thousand dollars so we need to do better i think we can do better by our employees we can uh, start educating them that they do not have to use the hospital for certain services and we need to educate our employees as to what uh, drug stores give a better price on, on drugs and everything. We give the hospital a lot of business and they should negotiate some things for <laughs> us. We have a thousand employees here. And if, if they, if y'all are saying that's what the industry is paying, well, we're not an industry. You know, we're a government. We're not, uh, we can't raise uh, the prices on goods to pay for it like industry can. We can only raise taxes. But I think we that our HR or whoever, and I'm not pointing fingers at all, but I'm just saying that somebody could do a better job in educating our people um, that our insurance is co does cover a, an immediate care center rather than going to the hospital. When I cut my finger, I almost cut my finger off one day, <laughs> and I had to have stitches. I didn't go to the emergency room. I went to immediate care, and they did it, and I paid a little copay over there. But if I'd gone to the emergency room, like a lot of people may have done, then the cost just keeps going up. Uh, I just think we could do better. Um, this is way too much of a jump for our employees. We just gave them raises, and now we're taking it back with uh, insurance costs. Uh, and it may not hurt some of the higher paid uh, directors and people like that, but it is going to hurt our workforce. And it's just uh, dropping it on us right here. What uh, the open enrollment is less than a month away. Um, I just don't agree with this, uh, and I think we can do better. I think. Maybe instead of going to 4,000, we could go up to 2,500 and, and then start immediately educating our staff what they can do. And, and they need to know, and a lot of people has this um, concept that, well, it doesn't matter where I go, my insurance pays for it. But what they need to realize is the insurance comes back on them and us. 
and we can't continue to let the cost just keep going up and the county footing the bill. That's why we, we've got to reiterate to them that they've got, uh, you know, they're in this game too. So uh, I just do not agree with jumping from seven, uh, 1750 up to 4000 in a year's time. If uh, someone has a child or a loved one or a family member that has diabetes, this is going to kill them. This is going to really hurt them. And any kind of chronic disease where you, you're going to spend them uh, out of pocket immediately, you know. I just don't agree with this. I think we could do better. As far as the babies are concerned, <laughs> the baby boomers are retiring and we're hiring younger people. We, we <laughs> so uh, some things you can help and some things you can't help. <laughs> so I, I just would recommend that we uh, lower the, uh, the out of pocket and then work with our staff to uh, do better. Now you're back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Vice Chairman Robinson. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I'll, I'll be brief. Um, th this is a good topic. Th this is one of those true kitchen table, talk to your family. This is a real topic. I, I commend the Benefits Committee to tackling this. Um, you know, Health plan is complicated, a lot of moving parts. I respect the mindset it takes to get into this and understand how it works. Obviously, uh, being a you know, financial plan side type of guy, I, I can follow the money. But it's just one of those like, okay, this is real. Each one of us can look into our own households at our own table, whether it's a dependent, whether it's a parent that lives with you, whether it's um, um, obviously children or spouses or whatever the case may be or you're talking to a friend, it's real. Healthcare will, will continue to go up. Now, let's talk about what this means for us here. Douglas County, I, I'm, um, on this one, um, I, it's just two points I had a pause on this yesterday to the work session. So this is for the public coming from District 2 only. This is strictly me. I'm not waging in um, from um, uh, obviously a, a district perspective, but this is a county issue. And it, it, it bothered me on um, the number of births that we have. And I think we still, we, we stepped over that. And I think it needs to be spoken to again. So um, um, I asked staff to provide me or to find um, probably over the past three to four years, can somebody give me the history of number of births for employees for the past three to four years? Can y'all give me a rough staff, Jennifer or Fred or someone? That's one of the things we did talk about yesterday, Matt and I, and Matt was here yesterday, um, that going back to Anthem, and they will have to tell us that. They can run the reports and tell us. Okay. And we, we re requested that so we could go back and get All it. Right. Now, now, this is important. Uh, we're being asked to make a decision without any historicals. So you, you, you're sort of pushing into a moment that says, okay, make a decision. I have no history. In my own knowledge, 66 babies, uh, is a lot of babies for an employee base of a thousand in one year. Now, if I if I recall, this is for the public. We have historically been told. Now, again, I'm just going. I heard it was somewhere between four to eight babies per year are birth within the employees. Four to eight. Four to eight. All right. There's about six on average. Let's just say for the past three years, we had 66. That's an anomaly. That's not a percentage, that's 10X. 10 times six is 60, some 11, 11X, 66. So I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, are we allowing this increase to be driven by an anomaly? I have to challenge what's being presented. It's the only one thing I'm like, I, I'm not, um, so what we're doing is that all future mothers are gonna be punished by this higher premium. I have a problem with that. I have a problem. So 66, congratulations, came through with the benefit at a lower pace, and now all of a sudden, now everybody else is going forward because it's a one-time moment. 
All right, so here's my question. Um, and Jennifer Hallman, director, what was the amount that you mentioned that this 66 would impact? I know we were increasing it from 15 million to 18 million to accommodate this with a $3 million difference. Can you break the math down for me? Uh, it quick? was $750. $750. $750. What? Oh, go ahead. Uh, when we had talked about it this afternoon, yes. um, you had said of the different categories um, that was causing the increase in our claims. Yes. Take the uh, maternity and see what that cost would be uh, based upon the. Um, was it four thousand? No, the difference between the seventeen fifty and the four thousand, and that was seven hundred and fifty dollars. So that would take it down to three thousand two fifty. Fifty. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. sir. So, my position would be take that out. I think it's too much. I, I think you should not. It's almost like mm, I'm, I'm just not feeling that component having um, that sixty six was such an anomaly. I still question it. I still don't even. I don't even agree with the number. I, I mean, prove it. Um, and there's no historical to back up to even show my, my peers how that trajectory is now we're setting it up at a much higher bar that says, okay, but next year is going to be four to eight. I, I have a problem. So I'm going to put that to the side. Um, it, that's my point. Take, take that out. Um, and, and the last thing is that one of the things that you, you mentioned um, that came forth as this recommendation that uh, there needs to be education. And I don't, I don't disagree to my, to my fellow employees. I, I don't disagree to the citizens that are listening to this. I don't disagree. But it's how you talk to the citizens is when I have a problem. It's like wh whether it's staff talking to staff or whomever, I, I think sometimes the messaging comes off wrong. Yesterday it was stated that we're going to use robocalls as a mechanism for, for staff members when they're, they don't, they could have used a different um, option to fulfill whatever they were trying to fulfill. I'm keeping this simple. I have a problem with robocalls because they're very intrusive, very <coughs> impersonal. And I'm okay with rewarding good behavior with incentives, <coughs> letters, you know, get the latest, I don't know, um, uh, spa treatment, um, you know, a check in the mail. But our employees are not kids. And I won't, I won't support insurers who use leadership as a mechanism to chastise people who have chronic situations and says, you should have did it a different way. Now, you can do better than that. That option must be stricken altogether. Do better than that. Don't, don't, don't do that. They're chronic. You can do better than that. I mean, send me an email. Send me a message. Allow me to self-select into the email. And I can delete, delete, delete. When you send these robocalls and, you know, hey, you could have did a different option and stuff. You, you could have went here versus there. I got a problem with that, guys. They, they, they do better. This is my chronic. They need to be defended and advocated for as well. I, I get the expense. Don't treat them that way. Take the 66 out and um, let's do a better job in messaging. I don't disagree with education, but do better in how, like, you don't, don't talk down to them. Don't make them feel a certain way when they're already feeling a certain way. And you can't be so, so, so mechanical about what's right for the sake of the money. It's like, okay, you know these are humans, right? You know these are our peers. Don't do that. Uh, so those two elements, I would like to see my board, if we can, make those adjustments. Um, um, I yield. Okay. Uh, I, I'll let, I mean, I, I'll come, well, let me, let me, let me close. <coughs> I won't, I, I won't yeah, belabor this. Closing statement. Um, my first question, though, can you, re, can you give me those levels of one and two again about the cost measures that we went over earlier? Just, I'm just, there was like a level one and two about, I think it was uh, medicine costs. Yeah. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah. the pharmacy? Yes, pharmacy, um, yeah, yes. Changing yes. the pharmacy. So basically, if you go with the, 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 the level one, level two pharmacy, the copays for anyone using a level one pharmacy would not change. It's mm -hmm. 10, I'm sorry, 15, 30, and 60. If they use a level two pharmacy, they would pay $10 higher, $10 more per tier. So tier one is 25 as opposed to 15. 40 instead of 30, and 70 as opposed to 60. Yeah. And those, the level two pharmacies would be Walgreens, Publix, and, Publix, and there are some other locals that fall in that. Got it, got it. And I guess my only other question here would be, okay, Fred, and I don't know who all is on this 
this benefit uh, committee. What was the outcome? Of, what did you guys have to use to get to this number or this decision of roughly four thousand dollars? You had like an option one, two, three, and four, something of that caliber. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can answer that. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we, this is all done by an underwriter. Basically, we say what will the claims look like if we do this, and that they give us these decrements, mm -hmm. and so they look at the overall group, all the members, what the claims, you know, the previous 12 months, and they come back and say, if you do this, this is what we can expect. Okay. And so they gave us the three levels for the 2,500, 3,000, and 4,000. Obviously, yeah. 4,000 being the biggest at 3%. So a 3% decrement equaled about nearly 500,000, or not, they anticipate right. a $500,000 savings in the claims. Well, I'll just add that, that we all know that insurance costs, benefits costs, these numbers, medical, has been skyrocketing for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can run, but you can't hide. It, it, it exists. Did you guys take into consideration the, the 66 little ones that decided to come on board? And the, uh, I mean, did you take into consideration when I did my prostate cancer uh, surgery, did you take into consideration all these numbers? Because I, I mean, I'm a part of that number that, it, that had that increase because I, I was just telling the chair uh, of the benefits committee, I, I'm a part of those numbers and I know those numbers exist and we know that from a cancer society to uh, the babies now, as we have realized, will play a part, a crucial part in these numbers. All of those things at the committee level, did you guys kind of look at that or did that didn't exist or you didn't have the information? I'm just curious. We, I mean, we look at the overall claims number, um, and and you know, and and then the high cost member claimants, and mm -hmm. so you the have the data. Spin. You have yes. the data. Yes. And and even with the data, but we don't we don't look at it on an individual basis. We can't right. do the hypothesis. You know, and, and I'm not asking. Right. I'm, I'm being facetious. We do look at it as an aggregate total. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So so you did have the data. Of course. And, and you guys based it on data. Correct. Right. Not. A pie in the sky, not and, a not a dartboard, <laughs> right? Okay, okay, thank you. So, so I mean, and 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 I know the numbers are extremely high. I get it, but I know me. I, I sit on the ACCG defined benefits uh, committee, and it only go it, the numbers. As long as I've been sitting there, they haven't went down. So the cost, uh, the medical cost, has not decreased at all in 20 years that I can think of. The question is, how do you can try and control these costs? So if by chance, Jennifer, for you, if by chance we decide to take a different route, let's say the committee take another second look at this to kind of understand, get a true understanding, not that it's gonna be any different. If we decide to say, let's look at, as Vice Chairman spoke about, you know, um, a $3,000 cost let's say option two, and I don't have them in order, so don't quote me on that. If we decide to do that, then the additional thousand dollars using that as a number, uh, where would that come from? It, uh, somewhere it, st it still exists. It doesn't, it, it doesn't go away because we reduced it, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, the cost would come from the general fund. Oh, okay. Uh, and if we went from the 4,000 uh, down to from the 4,000 slash 8,000 for family to okay. the 3,000 slash 9,000 for family, mm -hmm. it would be an additional cost to the plan of hundred about $163,000. So, and, and I, I wanted the general public to kind of hear that because mm -hmm. it doesn't go away. The mm -hmm. cost still exists. So the question is who will pay? Will it be the county within our uh, coffer or would it be passed on, or not really passed on, but it'll be a cost to, to the user, the end user, which will mm -hmm. be the consumer. So I, I get it, I'm just making sure that everybody, first of all, that you guys have the data. That was my major concern, that you guys have the data to say, this is why we came to, as a committee, recommending option four. I'll call it four, but it's $4,000, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I don't know that, I get my options all out of, but, but you guys did have the data, and you guys did look at all the categories, and you guys did look at uh, in the event that we decided to just take on the cost ourselves as a county to offset that. So 
I think everything was on the table that you guys had. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, from my readings, that was a, a unanimous vote at the committee recommendation level, or was it not? Was it a five through? It was not unanimous. It wasn't unanimous, okay. So I believe okay. that uh, obviously the, uh, the 4,000 vote, uh, 4,000, um, uh, you that, 4, that passed. Votes? Okay, okay. Yeah, but I believe it, it received uh, five, five, it was a majority vote. Majority it vote. It was a majority. Got it. Yes. Okay, so everybody was in an agreement with that. Right. Got you, got right. you, okay. Okay, all righty, so with that being said, okay, um, good stuff. I mean, I understand this is, you know, when it gets tough, and we're making these kind of tough decisions as to kind of how do you move, but the decision has to be made. The question is which way and, and what do we do at this point? Uh, so with that being said, I'll uh, yield back, uh, Madam Chair, okay. I'll yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. I believe you had something, Commissioner Carthen, you wanted to add. So and I'll close. One, one of the things that I really wish we could change was the narrative on medical care. It's great, you know, to have it when you are healthy, right? But it's also great to have it when you need it. And for me, sitting in the meeting, understanding that either we would charge 20% premium on every single employee, that means they're out of pocket, every paycheck would incur more money. More money would come out their paycheck to cover these overages, right? So in my mind, it was like, no, I, I don't think that that's the best way. So when the benefits committee presented, hey, let's look at maybe upping the deductible, because that means that one, we can actually lower the cost of the claims that the county pays out, but still give a great quality of service and medical care to the employees, right? To me, that just made more sense, because if you are not chronically ill, if your baby, if, you, if you're not pregnant and you're not having, you know, a lot of babies, and I'm wanting to talk, right, because I got four of them, so I, I would be wanting to talk, but if, if you're managing your health, this increase in deductible will never hit you. It will never hit you. And for 90% of us, that is the case. But for that 10% who does have to think about, am I going into, you know, am I going into the ER unnecessarily? As a parent, I don't want to have to think about that. I want to know that it's available and I'll deal with the monetary part afterwards. No hospital is going to turn you away because you got a high deductible. And one of the things that I deal with every single day is patients coming to me asking me, how can you help me? Some of my patients come to me and they have a $10,000 deductible. That means do they pay me or do they get their medication? And you would be surprised how many times I ask my PAs, can you go in the closet and get some samples to hold this patient over because they can't pay us and pay for their pharmacy? I mean, this, this is real world stuff that I deal with every day. So I'm very sensitive to what medical care is. I can't imagine that someone would think that we would sit in the benefits committee and decide that we're going to gouge our employees. That's not what we're doing. We're making sure that our employees have good coverage. We're making sure that those who don't use it unnecessarily or who don't abuse it are actually able to still afford it. So I just want to make sure that, that my peers understand where we're coming from. $4,000 is a lot of money, but it's not paid all at once. You have your coinsurance, you have HSA that we provide. There are a plethora of educational places where we can actually help our employees understand how to manage their care. And we're not doing that. So I, I, I agree with Madam Guider. We do need to educate. But I also agree that we can't put the taxpayers in charge and, and, and gouge them and, and ask for more. we got to take onus of this. So I, I, I yield with that, Madam Chair, but I just wanted to ensure that everybody on this platform understood that recommendation. And you are a part of that committee as well, Madam Chair, so you understood the numbers coming forth as well. So with that, I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carth, and I just, I'll close. I had one question. I had a little concern, I believe John, this is John, yeah. when you mentioned that uh, two to three years we've had uh, the ability with that tier, uh, pharmacy tier one, tier two, 
So uh, it was all new news to us in the room like when I say that, the, the <laughs> committee. Blue so, Cross came out with a plan, so I think, last year. Last year. Yeah, and it was, we're introducing it this year. Okay. Yeah. So last year, so we're just introducing it this yeah, year. It was not a part of the, the county's plan. And then also, uh, yeah, I serve as the vice chairman of the, of the benefits uh, committee, and certainly I'm all about impact and, and looking at, uh, and certainly I wanted to kind of remove my emotions a little bit because I've stood at the bedside with chronically ill patients before. But once I looked at the actual, uh, the 4,000, which I've met with uh, Jennifer this morning and Fred and just wanted to look because there are certain variables all bunched in one that's gonna help with that cost savings and that out-of-pocket cost was just one layer. I was under the impression, under the impression that it was gonna be a total, maybe $2 million impact to the budget, but it was, I was certainly, I misunderstood that portion is about $244,000 impact. So I said, well, that's some of the things that we, we're gonna garner on the left hand side, which TABT is coming in a little higher, some things that I was thinking about. But also, I was thinking about the fact that um, genetics are something that we can't control, such as diabetes, and some of those things is just natural. Uh, some of them naturally, uh, it's type one particularly is one that you don't ask for, it just comes. Uh, uh, glycoma, all kinds of things that you, you're born with, uh, and it's already, you're pre-exposed before you, you know, before you're even born. It's already there in your genetics. So I just don't want to dismiss those chronically ill patients, uh, the ones that I know we carry in the, the brunt, but I wanted at the same time, so when I came in office 30 months ago, 32 months ago, it was at $1,250, I believe that's where we were. Then we moved it to $1,750. And then to say 4,000, that's, that's really, really steep. I, I, once you explained it to me this morning, I said, that's, that's real steep. That's, that's a huge jump. So I'm thinking, I walked in the door 32 months ago and it was 1250. I don't believe the 2,500 uh, 2, is unreasonable. That, I mean, that's right, that's still moving in the right direction. We are changing, we are sending a message. But at the same time, I would like to see more work done around education. I believe we're very reactive uh, when things, when the report come on, you know, again, I had the, the bandwidth and the knowledge to understand that pharmacy drives costs. Sit at the board, sit with this uh, board, been on the board since I was elected uh, for the benefits uh, committee, and realized that uh, uh, pharmaceuticals play an important part, and it can apply pressure. We had a nine hundred fifty thousand dollars savings. We will incur with this new medic. Uh, what is it? Change from is it Medicare or Blue Cross Blue Shield? This change on the tier one to tier two. So we should see, we're gonna net some more savings and I'm quite sure it's projected in those numbers. So I'm in the same uh, mindset. I believe 4,000 is just a little steep. Uh, at the same time, we're still moving. 1250, when I walked in the door 32 months ago, now 2,500, realizing that, uh, the, that our employees will have to own some of it. Uh, but um, 4,000 is just steep to me. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, I'll just continue. We have a motion and a second on the table. Thank you all so much, and we'll go from there. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the table to authorize and approve, for, to authorize and approve the 2020 Douglas County Employee Benefit Offerings as recommended by the Benefits Committee. Um, please prepare to cast your votes. Point of order, Madam Chair? Yes, point of order. All right, what, which option is being recommended? Just clarify that recommended by the committee. The one that was recommended, we voted on this first. 4,000. Okay, 4, right, 000. that's what, thank you. So, yeah. Chairman, the benefits, is that it? That is it, the recommendation that came from the benefits committee is the one that we are voting on. 4,000, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 3-2 vote and the motion carries not to uh, move forward. So therefore, Board of Commissions, Commissioners, I would like to make a motion to approve the 2020 Douglas County Employee Benefit Offerings uh, with $2,500 being a recommendation for the out-of-pocket costs. Second. You made the motion. Mm -hmm. Is it, okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Madam yeah. Chair, just for clarification purposes, so the record's clear, is that a person or a family max? Because I think y'all need to clarify that. A person. 
purposes of per the calculation? Per person. Is that a per individual, Fred? Okay. Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Don't we also need to vote, or does the board need to vote on the medical renewal, which is either option one or option two? That needs to be included as well, right? Option one is, that's what it is. Option one has all everything. Is it bundled in the same thing? Op option one, the only thing that, that's different is just out-of-pocket costs. Is that it? If we remove that or? No, there's two sets of choices in my, is my understanding. Fred, we probably need to get you all on the record, if yes. you don't mind. Yep. So the medical renewal, you have option one and two, and then med medical benefit plan design, you have option A, B, C, and D. And the recommendation that we submitted to, uh, to the board included option two, uh, and that would be the uh, what is that? Increasing, the stop loss. increasing the stop loss to uh, 1,075,000. Uh, $175, From 100. So you have that, and then also right. with the motion, or, I mean, there's another option. There's one at 150000 too, but there's two items. That there's two voted. different items to vote on. Mm -hmm. So the original uh, recommendation was for option two, the $175,000 uh, stop loss increase, and option D, which was the $4,000, $8,000 uh, out, out of pocket max. Yeah, and so, so it's option a is what I want, 2,500, is that option A? Because I believe option That's, two is fine, right? Is that, we uh, okay no, with option, option two? Option A would be no, no changes. Option oh, B yeah. would be the option 25. Option B, mm -hmm. option B, which, which is 2,500, is That's what correct. I said. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you were just gonna change that, it would be, if, if you weren't gonna touch, it would be option two, two B as opposed to two D. Okay, option two B, okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, just for purposes of the yes. uh, vote and discussion, you, do you want to withdraw the motion and restate it? Uh, it, it no. You're all right? Yeah, you good? I'm fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Option two. Uh, B. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please prepare to go. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Real quick, uh, I, again, I, I understand the first one was defeated. All right, we're coming with a secondary option. Uh, again, I, I don't like the nickel and dime. If we're going to do this, do this and do it right. My only issue with this is the babies, right? It, it just, the presentment of the information was just, um, it, it wasn't accurate enough. I think we, we artificially inflated this with those babies, right? So th this is important to me. I understand the work that was done, but it's how to look at the math that was presented to you. And it's like, no, that was inflated. That's a one-time anomaly. So I, I still am standing on my 32.5 um, um, as, as an option. Um, do what you need to do as far as everything is concerned. And just, just take that one component out. And again, I'm still against um, the RoboCop. I yield the floor. Okay. Point. Any other discussion? Yeah, point of order. And, and I, too, just want to make sure I'm clear. And, and Fred, I may need you guys to come back up just for one second. I, I hate you guys might as well stay up here for a minute so we can kind of clarity because I'm still not clear. So with the numbers that we're speaking of now, what cost is it to the, the, um, the end user, which will be the, the Douglas Countyans for the, the employees? And what cost is it is, and I don't know, Jennifer, you might kind of chime in on that as well. What is the, the, the cost to the county as to, you know, so everybody can be clear and understand what we're voting on, and then I, I'll respond after that, so if you would. Mm -hmm. So we are anticipating with no changes. In and this is the one that Madam Chair is making a, a motion on. Yes, yeah, so it would be 2B. It would be 2B. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, with no changes, the county's looking at 16 million, basically 300 in claims next year. If you go with option 2B. 2B. Okay. That will reduce the claim total by one, just over 1.7 million, okay. and the fixed cost by re, by increasing that by 25,000 on the specific stop loss, which is option two. Instead, you see instead of a four and a half percent increase, it goes down by about nine percent your fixed cost. So instead of 2.7, it goes to 2.4. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, who, who is the 2.4? That's the... Yeah, the, let, let, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Jennifer, budget. my little brain cell, I got a that's what P brain don't work always that way. You're Jennifer talking understands. about the budget impact. That's exactly correct. <laughs> if you, um, if it's voted on to go to the 2,500 uh, out of pocket member, 7,500 for family, mm -hmm. then the um, cost added to the, um, the general fund uh, to contribute to the health care fund would be $245,000. Got you. Got you. Okay. Therefore, the covered member would go from 1750 to 2500. That would be their out-of-pocket maximum. That $750 increase. Okay. Uh, and then that would be attributed to um, a lesser savings that we would have because we know that, like you said, health care is going to go up regardless. Absolutely. Just inflation, just health care costs in we general. We haven't figured out a way to so, control those costs. Right. So yeah. the 2500 7500 would give us a savings of uh, $245,000 uh, $245, versus 490000 Got you. Okay. So now, with all that being said, I'm still confused. However, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good, though. No, I'm just, no. I'm, oh, okay. I'm just, yeah. But I, I guess... My last question to all of this, is this a time, how sensitive in timing is this? It has to happen like today, or if we had time to say, go back to the committee, make another recommendation after looking at all the impacts of the, 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 uh, the general fund, the, the end user, which is the, the employees and so on, so is, is, it, is it time sensitive to where if we didn't do it today, we did it down the road, how would that, would that what kind of impact would that have? I, I would say, uh, you know, with all the emphasis being placed on education and um, wanting our employees, giving them the opportunity to attend some of the meetings that we're going to schedule, mm -hmm. I would say that it is fairly time sensitive. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier in my earlier comments, we're, we're behind the eight ball because of a reason, uh, you know, we wanted to try and get the best bang for our buck for the county, right. which, uh, you know, caused us to wait a, a couple of months later. Right. But, and that's kind of put us behind a little bit. So, so we're already behind. And right. now to, to wait another meeting or two to get the committee chair to. Well, two. Well, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, a committee, a commi one committee. But I'm just, I, I, I don't want to rush it, uh -huh. uh, nor do I want to get it incorrect and, and not do the right thing that's most benefit to the the end user to include the county okay. because it, it it doesn't at the end of the day someone will have to pay right whether it's the county at the general fund side of things or the end user which will be this the employees and, and i'm not trying to make either i'm trying to find that equilibrium where we can kind of all share in all of this because there's no other way around it, if I'm hearing correctly. That's correct. Okay. So um, my thoughts are, if if it if we put it off a minute, would it put you guys so far off to where now we we're, we're behind the eight ball of we won't be insured, I guess. Well, no, it w it wouldn't be a case where we wouldn't okay. be insured. It would just the open enrollment period would be a lot shorter. Uh, it would take a lot of time for as far as it would take time away from us being able to uh, uh, market to the employees, being able to hold meetings, and, you know, it would... Uh, and better explain it. Right, and better explain it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the less... We have less meetings to give the uh, employees. Uh, they wouldn't have, uh, you know, more options to choose from in terms of attending these meetings that we'll, uh, that we'll be having, so... Typically, we have a, a, a week, um, you know, worth of meetings uh, for the employees to attend and get this information. Mm -hmm. um, that will shorten the window for us. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't know if you guys want to run because there, there may be other questions. I, <laughs> okay. I, I yield back. I think, Commissioner Guider, you. I just wanted to ask one question about the tiered pharmaceuticals. Is that savings? Uh, part of this, uh, the, these plans that y'all are presenting to us? Yes. 
you've already incorporated the savings from the tiered pharmaceuticals into the plan. Anthem anticipates about a 2% savings by making that change. The claims will go down about 2% by just by simply putting in the level one and level two pharmacy. Okay. And the dollar amount's about 325000 Okay. Well, I wasn't sure whether or not that was had already been incorporated in it. But does uh, Anthem ever go and talk with the, the hospitals and, and try to negotiate prices on certain procedures? Yes, uh, I think the contracts are typically good for every three years. So they have provider relations um, who are the ones in there. And when you hear about Piedmont and Wellstar, all these big hospital yeah. chains who are having contract negotiations with, with uh, the carriers like Anthem, it's because they want more and Anthem's trying to give them less you know, with these reimbursements. Um, and so, yes, they do that generally every three years. And so when you hear, you know, let's say if, if, if there's a big hospital merger, that can affect how the claims um, are paid. And, and so every, every time they're up for negotiation, there's always a generally an increase of three, six percent on those, on those claims. And, and Anthem is fighting for the employers because ultimately Anthem is paying the claims for Douglas County, but they're pulling it out of the Douglas County account. Well, uh, I, I'm like uh, Commissioner um, Mitchell um, I'm part of the number because my husband's had every kind of <laughs> procedure in the past two years and every doctor he went to asked for another scan. Every doctor. We said we just had one three months ago. Well, we got to have a current one. And, and every time they always referred us to the hospital. They never told us you can go get your scan somewhere else. But if uh, we have, I think, two places here in Douglas County that would be covered by our insurance if we went there and pay just a small, a much large, a smaller amount than we would if we go to the, the hospital. I don't understand where they get their standards. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it doesn't make sense to me. If you can go to this place and get the same thing for hundreds of dollars and go to another place and pay thousands of dollars. I don't understand that. That doesn't make a bit of sense to me. Yeah. So, so I think they're making money on one thing to offset losing on another. But That's actually I, one of the changes to the plans that we're recommending to try to encourage, you know, members going to freestanding outpatient centers. Yes, yes. And that's, that's the reason for that is to, to drive them to the lower cost. There, uh, but, yeah, because. And, uh, and another thing, when, when you have a plan that um, has a, a low deductible and a low out of pocket, um, it really, if you've met your out of pocket, it doesn't really matter where you go exactly because right. there's no cost to you. Exactly. So by increasing the, the deductible, increasing the out of pocket, it puts more responsibility on the patient, the member, um, saying, you know what, this actually matters a little bit more now. I need to go somewhere that's a little mm -hmm. more cost effective. Right. Okay. Well, I just wanted to kind of clarify that because uh, I, I wasn't sure whether those pharmaceuticals had been added in there. Okay. Thank you. I yield back. Commissioner <coughs> Carson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to go on record stating that I appreciate the Benefits Committee. I appreciate the information that you brought us. Um, I wish we wouldn't have to even broach the subject. Um, again, medical care is a very sensitive issue. Um, and taking more money out of the general fund is uh, something that I wish we wouldn't have to do. Um, I implore all of my committee and the, um, the Board of Commissioners to really take a look at what's the best option going forward for us as a county to ensure that one, we take care of the employees, but two, also that we can manage costs on our end. When I hear about, you know, all of the extra projects that are coming out of the general fund that I have to ask, you know, where is this going? Um, this is just another one of those. And um, so I, I just want to say thank you to the benefit committee. Uh, this is no reflection of you. Um, your voice and your vote does matter. Uh, and uh, with that, Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. I just had one just closing piece, and I certainly, again, as I sit down and mull and think about certain things, I look at the wide range of salaries that we have here in, the, in, the, in this government. 
Uh, certainly we have starting from some salaries starting at $10 an hour and then on the other end maybe $75 an hour. And then I always just sit and think about the, the man that, or woman that have, that's making that $10 an hour. How will they deal with this? The ones that are making a nice salary, six figures and over, or should I say 100,000 plus, you're, you're comfortable. But I have to look at the other side of the rainbow. Simply, I can use as, as an analogy the buses. I, I have four cars. I didn't need to ride a bus, but I had to look just beyond me. I had to look outside of me and look at those who are less fortunate. So this is just a, just me thinking as a period of that, but we are moving it. So it's not that it's, my proposal is we're going to raise it, but I just won't be able to take it as high right now. I'm, I'm suggesting to the board, not that, not, not, not that high, you know, 2,500 versus 12, I mean, was it 1250 when I walked in the door 30 months later? They said 25. It's, it's creeping. So they, it's still putting pressure on the $10 an hour uh, uh, employee, uh, realizing that they have a shared responsibility. But I just, just thinking about those moments when I, I remember the, the Great Recession. I mean, it, it was a game changer for me and everybody in this room. It's, an, it's, it's difficult to live from check to check, and you're uncomfortable, and you're finding pennies under the couch. You know, I started. I used to throw pennies away. I picked those pennies up and I put them in my pocket at that time. So I just want us not to forget uh, where we come from. That the Great Recession is something that I will always be in my mind. I'll live with that forever. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the table. Please prepare to cast your votes. It's got to be a hand vote. Oh, okay. So oh, it was okay. We have a motion and a second on, on the floor. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. Please indicate by raising your right, your right hand if you're for. So we have a two, three, <laughs> and the motion does not carry. No, it was two. It was two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Okay. Madam Chair and Ann. And Ann. We are not making any progress well, tonight, are we? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to pose a motion that might okay. be of some interest that we and I hate to do this to you, uh, Fred, but I think we probably need to table this item, send it back to committee, let these guys, you know, kind of get another, um, put another eye on it and look at it again and restate it and bring it back from the co committee chair yes. recommendation and see what that looks like. So that would be my motion to, to table it. Um, I, I don't, I would say to the next meeting in hopes that that will give you guys uh, enough time after that when that decision is made as to what direction we go because it sounds like some want to go all in some want to go halfway in and some got their toe in so my theory <laughs> would be let's let's table it to the next meeting um, in hopes that in that in between time that the committee chair somehow uh, call a special meeting of some sort to work through the details and make sure that when we come back we have something that's at least uh, sustainable to where it's, it, it would go through uh, this board of commissioners. So that would be my motion to table it into the next meeting. Madam Chair, point of order. Mm -hmm. All right, just re real quick before you, you take up that question. Uh, again, I, I'm saying this is on time. Make a decision. All right, take a position. I think you got one more option that can be sent, be considered here to 3,000. Vet it call it if it fails then you move to you know back back to the drawing board but I, I mean I, I think my biggest issue one more time is the children the babies threw the numbers off I think we could have got through the, the larger amount I'm not in a disagreement of, of the need to adjust I just fundamentally have a, a, a problem that we're basing it on an anomaly it's a non reoccurring event you're setting future expenses based on a one-time moment and that is a flaw in you guys approach now if you can bring any uh, actuary down here and they sit here want to have this conversation like i had with that accountant on uh, that auditor like no you inflated this you inflated with those 66 there's no way i can buy this there's no way around it it's inflated make the adjustment board of commissioners to what's reasonable don't take that at point blank to sort of have it forced up. Now, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But, my, but I'm principled and I haven't moved off that point, which is like, no, that, that's wrong. That, that's a wrong number. It's flawed. 
it's inflated and you're going to carry it forward based on this inflated number. And so for that, I just ask that um, if somebody makes the motion, you have one more option before you go off the table. I mean, keep, keep it on task. Vote it, move on, or to the point, um, Commissioner Mitchell, start over. How are you? Yeah, okay, point thank of order. you. Can, okay. yeah, just point of order. I, I just want to make sure that my motion still stands. It still stands. Yes, my, my motion still stands and hope that I'll get a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And I just, and when I say any discussion, uh, uh, to Commissioner Carthen's credit, she was not available for some of those meetings because she was working on her certification. So I believe that when I say that her commissioner's certification, so some of those meetings she didn't have a chance to attend. So we kind of, to me, it was shotgun to her. And she didn't have time to really digest it. I wanted to, again, she is the chairman of the committee. I'm the vice chairman as well, so I do have a voice. But our committee has a voice, and we want to go back and make sure we explain the process into the, you know, to the entire committee. We just have to have a, a special call meeting that could be done immediately. And I know you're on board with that, Commissioner Carthen, so we can understand what we're looking at because I want to be fair. With that said, Commissioner Mitchell has, a, he, we, he called it. We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to, we can't cast and a vote. Okay. A table. You say yeah, you want to take yes. yes, that will be a table. Yes, yes. we table to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand to table this. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you all. And we'll just yes. have to come up with a special call meeting immediately. All right, we'll move on to the next item. We're a little behind time, guys. Um, we're going to move on quickly. Let's move to tab number 10, authorization. Uh, to terminate the contract for Keisha Wright Hill, effective immediately. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Okay, there we go. There it is. There it is. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Next, we have tab number 11. Uh, before I read it, uh, if I, I would certainly like to ask our county administrator to share uh, that our uh, purchasing director, Bill Peacock, uh, will, uh, has rendered or tendered his, um, he's retiring. I don't want to say resignation. He's retiring soon, if you could tell the, the citizens about that before I call for this motion. Yes, ma'am. Bill Peacock, Purchasing Director, is retiring as of December 31st. Okay, he's retiring as of uh, December 31st and certainly wanted to make sure the public was aware of that. And we appreciate his uh, many years of service. He has done a phenomenal job. But with that being said, we have to fill the position and get prepared uh, and be prepared as we move into 2021 or 2020. I'm skipping a year. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to authorize chairman to execute an employee contract with Don Evers as Director of Procurement. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just one. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, uh, when will this be, in a, that, that'll be January 1 or now? January 1st. Okay, so in the meanwhile, she's performing the duties between now and January 1st. Is there any kind of compensation that's gonna be uh, made for that, you know, because I, I just don't want to see her do all this work, which is, I'm glad where we're going with this. I just want to make sure that she's, she's compensated somehow. So Mr. With, Peacock is currently on sick leave. He's mm -hmm. scheduled to come back, but he's, I don't know when that is. I think based on my conversation, I think he's, he, he's sick leave done and I don't know. And I may be wrong. I'm just we trying were told to told he was coming back. He's okay, coming okay. Back. And he may be, okay, he's we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Then I won't, I won't, but if by chance it becomes um, I don't know. I just want to make sure that she's compensated if by chance we find that he doesn't come back. Yes, sir. I'm good with that if the board is. Is the board good with that? That she, she'll be compensated in the event that he doesn't return for whatever reason? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, but I, I guess that would be more of a legal question to Ken if that's something that I, I don't want to, I don't want to kind of make it into a, 
a true motion, but I just want to make sure that it's just. But no, the, the motion right now is to approve this contract, which That's I correct. think yeah. begins on January 1 of 2020 right. for a year. Mm -hmm. So if it, the county is going to do anything else, we would need something secondary to this contract as it's being, if it were approved, if that makes sense. What I'm getting at, though, is there a need for any type of motion, or is it just be stated as such, you know, that that's what the county administrator, do we need to make a motion of that, of that or not? Well, I mean, it, I, I don't, I, I guess the question is this, and I don't know under, the, the, I don't know under spending authority for personnel to make the change, what is the change to? That, that's something that's going to require some action on this board, I would think, to change. Does okay. that make sense, Steve? Uh, this contract I, calls I, for a rate. I understand. She's at a rate. And it the, starts in January. Right. I'm only trying to accommodate, if necessary, that. in the event that <laughs> she ends up having to do this starting this month versus January. That's all. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not trying to make a, a stink out of it. I just want to make sure that, that we're not getting free service. The, 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 what's, what's, the motion I, is yeah. as hey, You could change this to start on a different day. No, 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 no you, I'm you not, could, no. You could do a separate motion authorizing Mark to make a temporary adjustment to her salary should he not return at some point. I guess the question is when will what? we know that until it That's runs? He's got the title until the end of the year. Does Understood. That make sense? And, and, and if he comes back, fine. If he doesn't, then Mark, I just want to make sure somebody acknowledged right. the mere fact of he Mark has an authority to just either move in that direction if that's the case. So no, I don't think I, I may be wrong, Mark. Do you think you have the authority? I'm, I'm not sure well, what I. The motion. chairman and I, I do up to up to an amount up to five thousand dollars. But I will let the board know that it's not uncommon for somebody to perform these duties until the actual retirement's occurred. Because there's a couple of things you got to look at. One, you got to look at the budget. Is there is there any money in the budget to provide anything? Okay. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of factors that go into it, but it's not uncommon. I can't remember the last time somebody got um, compensated for, you know. Okay. Well, I, I, I'll, but that's up to. I got you. I got you. So I, I'll yield, but I just want to make sure, for the record, that we know about that that exists. So I'll leave it at that. So, Madam Chair, you got your motion, your second on the floor, and you can kind of decide on which way you go. Okay. We have a motion and a second uh, to. Uh, to authorize the chairman to execute an employee contract with Don Evers as director of procurement effective January 1st, 2020. Please cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries, so thank you. We'll move on to the consent agenda. All items are subject to final legal review. Tab number 12, authorization to accept the fiscal year 19 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assist Assistance Grant JAG program in the amount of $16,419 with no required matching funds for the grant fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2020 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget as necessary. Tab number 13, authorization to amend the contract track with uh, Douglas Core to reflect the FY20 budget cut from the state. Authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Tab number 14, authorization to accept the renewal of our Victims of Crime Act VOCA, uh, granting the total amount of $148,668 with a local match of $29,734 through the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, CJCC, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Tab number 15, authorization for the chairman to execute a contract with Anise Harrington as assistant public defender, defender in state court. Tab number 16, authorization to approve a one-year service contract with NCI Incorporation for the tax and tag annex for the total cost of $7,697 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 17, authorization for the fire department to apply for and accept grant funds for, uh, from the Georgia Trauma Commission in the anticipated, I'm sorry, uh, amount of $5,083. 
dollars and five cents and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 18, authorization to approve a memorandum of agreement of affiliation between Douglas County Fire and EM EMS Department and Lithia Springs High School for emergency medical technician course and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Tab number 19, authorization to approve an agreement with Cobb County Fire and Emergency Services for EMS clinical rotations and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 20, authorization to approve a memorandum of understanding with GEMA to access the grant portal and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 21, authorization to advertise for a public hearing to consider amendments to the Douglas County Code of Ordinances regarding section 6-350 of article uh, 22, property maintenance code and section 11-71, definitions of article five, noise control. Mm -hmm. Tab number 22, well that was it, tab number 21, that was the, that's it, uh, Board of Commissioners. That concludes our uh, consent agenda. Any questions on pat any particular item? Okay. With that being said, do we have a motion to approve the Second consent move. agenda? Second. Second move. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? On we have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. All right, next we'll go with approval of expenses. Board of Commissioners, I know you had an opportunity to look at your expenses. And uh, with that being said, do we have a motion to approve? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion about any um, expense? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries uh, for the approval of, of the expenses. We have our announcements by our, uh, Mr. Rick Martin, our communications director. Would you please render our announcements? And I'm trying to, yeah. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, staff. Uh, just a few announcements we have. Uh, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and the City of Douglasville's Police Department are hosting the eighth annual Trunk or Treat right here at the courthouse on October 26th. That's from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. The event is free, open to the public. Trick-or-treating at the Douglas County Courthouse is scheduled for Thursday, October 31st, from 1.30 to 4.30. Fun time for all uh, while they visit and trick-or-treat inside the courthouse on multiple floors. For more information, the public is welcome to contact me at 770-920-7303. And uh, tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m., uh, public is invited to the grand unveiling of the Douglas County Electronic Message Board. Uh, that will be uh, for the first time uh, here at the courthouse, available for the public. And we have two additional events. Uh, yield back to you. Okay, Chairman. thank you so much, uh, Communications Director Rick Martin. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, you have a town hall coming up. If you could just share that with them, with the public about your town hall, Commissioner Carthen. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, for the citizens, on October 29th, which is a Tuesday, at 5:30, I will have a District 3 town hall. It'll be located at 3379 Highway 5 in Douglasville, Georgia. That's right across the street from the Vogue um, Hair Community College. Uh, so I would love to have everybody come out. Um, we're getting ready to do budget talks, and so I want to hear what the citizens um, actually think that we need in District 3 and the county as a whole. Uh, tonight you've heard us talk about budgets. You've heard the impacts of our decisions. And when we do things um, 
that take away from the general fund than a lot of things such as our parks and our roads, um, they suffer. So when you vote us in to make these decisions, your voices do matter. So pack the house um, on October 29th. Come out, share your ideas, voice your concerns. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen, and uh, District 2 Commissioner Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. I believe you have a town hall coming up as well. Yeah, I have my, my pretty much my ninth annual uh, budget um, town hall meeting is going to be on, I believe, Wednesday, right after Madam Carthen's, Wednesday the 30th of, of October at Deer Lake Park. And it should start right, right around 6 o'clock, I believe. It should be 6 o'clock. We'll confirm that. But 6 o'clock, it is to talk about the budget um, as annual, getting priorities, getting input, uh, which has always been consistent. But, but there is a bigger long-term capital plan that we're going to talk about. Um, there are some major decisions that the board has to make. It's a balancing act. It's about priorities. $10 a need, $1. Weigh in. Every need is not going to get met. But at the same point, there needs to be shaping. Um, and I look forward to your input so I can carry into our budget retreat in November with my peers on what the priorities of District 2 is. So you guys know the, you know the process. You understand how we do this. I look forward to seeing you then. Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, any other no. announcements from the Board of Commissioners? Okay. With that being said, if there's nothing else to come before this body, the, this meeting is adjourned.